morning and today we get to finally drive the Tesla Model 3. But I'm a little bit apprehensive because, well, today I'm going to find out whether this car lives up to all its promises or whether it was just a load of internet hype that's really going to let me down. So let's get on and have a look around. This video is sponsored by Just EVs, a family-run company with the largest selection of battery electric vehicles available with free UK delivery. They now also offer EV rentals. Have a look at justevs.co.uk and don't forget to mention EV Opinion for a free annual service. And what I'd like to do is start here, right at the front, in the area that worried me more than any other part of this car, because when I saw pictures and videos of this car, I thought the front looked just a bit bulbous. And I think it was all to do with these headlights. I didn't think they looked in proportion, and I thought it gave it a funny nose. But seeing it now in the flesh, I have to say, they blend really well. And the lines of the vehicle, and the, it's obviously it's all down to drag coefficient and trying to make this as efficient as possible. That's why it's got this sleek look and these almost bulbous parts to it. But when you see it in the flesh, when you see it with all the paint the same colour, actually it all just blends nicely into each other. And there's nothing around this car that you'll find, I don't think, particularly exciting. There's nothing wrong with it. I think the Model S is probably a better looking car. I think it looks more executive. But what I think this does is it, it's understated. It gives you a, a feeling that you're driving something a little bit special, but you're really not shouting about it. It's definitely all turn heads, probably because of this badge on the front. But the rest of the car, there's nothing ostentatious about it. There's nothing that you wouldn't want people to look at you driving around in it. You feel really, really comfortable in here. And I think that feeling continues when you come here at the side. It's a sleek looking car. These door handles, I think these are much better than the Model S. With the Model S, they pop out the side and then they look, if, you, if you're not used to driving a Tesla or certainly a Model S, it looks like it's a mechanical handle that you have to pull. That makes them break all the time. With this, you simply open it with your thumb and pull gently with your fingers. It makes you open the, the, the door much more gently. And as a result, I think there's less chance of you breaking these handles and they've still got that sleek look helping towards the aerodynamics. You see some little features here. We can see some cameras. Uh, I'll come back to the cameras and the bits and pieces around it later. But otherwise, I think you'll agree, there's nothing particularly exciting or particularly special about the side of the car. The wheels themselves, obviously there's different options. This car is a standard range plus. There are no optional extras on here. This is how it comes. They are the wheels that you get, the aero wheels. and. I think they blend quite nicely with the paintwork. Uh, I think it's fair to point out at this uh, moment that this is obviously in black. That is an optional extra now. They've switched their, their paint schemes and what you pay for. It now comes as that pearlescent white color as standard. You'd have to pay extra for the black. I think it's when you arrive here at the back, this is where it looks most like the Model S. I think the lines are very similar, the lights look very similar. It just looks a little bit narrower and a little bit more condensed in, in what it is. This is a saloon version. It's not a hatchback, even though it looks like it should be a hatchback, it's a saloon. And I'll show you the boot later because I'm quite impressed with the size of it. Entry in and out of this car is either by a credit card that you get with it, which obviously you can touch on the side of the door to open it. And then you put it in a position in here and it lets the car know you're in here and it will start. Or you can have the app on your phone. And as you approach the car, the app will recognize that you're next to the car, send a signal, the car will unlock, the car will allow you to drive it. But what about inside this car? Well, the most striking thing and the thing that we all got very, very excited about was the fact that everything is controlled off this center screen. So before I look at the rest of the car, let me just talk you through some of the key features on this screen. All your maps are based on Google Maps, also gives you your satellite navigation and you can control just about every feature in the car from the position of your steering wheel to where your wing mirrors are, your lights. And of course, set up exactly how you want the car to drive. Have a look at your trip, see how far you've gone. And if it's all a bit too much effort to touch the screen, then why not just talk to your car? Check out the radio stations. You've got DAB, you can connect your phone. And if the wing mirror is all a bit too much to look at, then why not have the rear camera on your screen? If you want to waste some time while you're waiting for your car to charge, you can play some games. And you can open just about every door and flap on the car from the comfort of your seat. 
Now, one of those features we saw there on the screen was the uh, air conditioning and how it all worked. And this is something that's got, it's really excited me because I didn't realize it worked like this until I actually got in it today. We've got one long strip of air vents right across the center of the dash. And as you play with the screen, you can tell that where you want the air to come out, what angle you want it to come out, how you want it to flow. It's such a brilliant system and it works so, so well at keeping this cabin at whatever temperature you want. You wonder why it hasn't been done before. And that's the key to Tesla. What they do is they take functions that we just take as granted and just accept, you know what, we've got air vents around the car, they work. If you're lucky, you've got a few in the back, but they improve them and they make them better. And they make them better to a point where you think, why didn't we think of that before? And that is one really, really good example of it. And that brings me on to the other point that because everything works off that screen, I've now got nothing in front of me. And again, my preconceived idea was when I get here, I'm gonna miss all those dials and all that information in front of me. Well, actually I don't. I thought at the very least, I would be concluding this video saying, this thing needs a head up display. It doesn't. It's the last thing it needs. Everything works from this screen. And because it's in your eye line, it's constantly breaking your eye line. It's no worse than looking down at a speedometer that's in the dash in front of you. You can see the speed you're going all the time. And what it does is it allows you a much lower dashboard and it gives you such a good view of everything around. I actually think this works really well. And that was going to be my big hang up. The fact that this it was the screen and nothing else. But actually having driven it, I, I think completely differently now. I really, really like that. But what that does do is it leaves you with this steering wheel almost being your focus of attention. Now, I love the feel of this steering wheel. It's a, it's a small, chunky steering wheel, which obviously controlled from the screen so I can get it exactly the right position that I want. But it does look to me a little bit cheap, which surprised me. It gives me almost like a bit of a early learning center Tonka toy kind of feel to it, which, okay, there's nothing wrong with it because it looks really, really well made. And I don't think I'm gonna have any issues with it. It just, it almost doesn't fit the rest of the car. It's not, it's not flash enough to go with the rest of the car, but that's just a personal preference. What I do really like is these stalks. They feel so much better quality than they ever did in the S or the X. They've obviously put some real thought into that. They feel like they're gonna last the car now where before I don't think they did. Other concerns I have in this car, shiny black piano, plastic, this, I hate this. I hate it in any car. I don't care what car it's in. I've been in here two minutes. This was immaculate when I got in. There's already my fingerprints all over it. This stuff scratches really easy as you're lifting stuff over it. And it's quite a big expansive area. So you're gonna get a bit of glare off of it. But for me, it just, you're gonna be forever with your cloth, giving it a little wipe, making sure it's shiny. I, I really don't like that at all, but that's what's in here. It does give a nice look, but practicalities, day-to-day -day use, I don't like that. The seats on the other hand, oh my word, how comfortable are these seats? These are, for me, a definite improvement on the S. They, when you first sit in them, you think, oh, these are gonna be far too soft. They just, you sink into them. But then very quickly, they almost wrap themselves around you. They support you. Everything feels really, really nice in these seats. And the rest of the cabin, well, you know, this actually, I have to say, feels really well made. And I've said it over the years, every time I get in a, a Tesla, every year that goes by, the quality of it gets better and better and better. And this is a huge jump forward, even from the last S that I, S that I drove. This has got such a good feeling to it. Uh, everything in here just feels well made and well thought out. Uh, I'm struggling to find anything that I could say to you, it's loose, it's shoddy, it looks like it's gonna fall apart. Everything in here feels good. Um, some of the other little things just probably worth mentioning, there's no door handle. Instead, I've got a button here to open the door. Uh, under this shiny stuff, well, if I click it open, I've got a storage area. I've got another storage area here, a couple of USB ports. It's a nice big area. One thing to note, this isn't a push and click. It doesn't like that. These are magnets. So you just have to offer it up and it shuts. We've got a couple of nice cup holders here. Big bottle fits no problem whatsoever. And likewise in the door, big bottle there fits no problem whatsoever. So lots of storage space in here before we even open up this center console. And under here we find a nice little velour area that we can put things. It's a tray that lifts out and then a nice deep well there. Whether you'd want to keep that tray in or not, I don't know. Uh, it's, well, you can customize it to yourself, can't you? 
but it just feels, everything about the front of this car, I think feels really, really good. Let's see how that transfers to the back. Well, sitting in here, the very first thing I noticed, and it wasn't so obvious when I was in the front, is this lovely panoramic glass roof that goes from the front, there's a bar here splitting it, and then all the way down to the back of the car. It gives me a real sense of light and space back here. And when we're talking about space, well, I'm five foot nine, that seat is in my driving position. Yeah, my feet are under there, but I do have a decent amount of room here. Now, I'm not saying if I was well over six foot if I'd fit. You know, I've probably got an inch or so to my head there. So yes, it does slope down. Yes, it is restrictive, but from children, having children in the back, from that point of view, there's loads of room. And that, because there's not a hump in the middle, actually that's a usable middle seat. And I would suggest three children comfortably, three adults, you would probably be shoulder to shoulder and want to sort of shifty over a little bit, but it could carry three adults. One interesting thing I do find is, Look how far my knees are up off the seat. That's because the floor is quite high. I'm guessing that's because the battery's underneath. Now that's not a major issue, but I feel that that's probably higher than a lot of other cars I've been in recently. So if you do have issues and you want support there, just, well, maybe sit in one yourself and see what it's like. Uh, otherwise, I've got an armrest here, which has got a couple of cup holders in, good size ones. We can put that uh, head restraint up. That makes that middle seat really, really usable. A Couple of pockets. Got some air vents here and a couple of USB chargers as well, which is great. Got a reasonable sized door bin here. Again, a button to open the door back here and um, my electric windows, which go mm, probably just over half, maybe not quite three quarters of the way down. So uh, that might be annoying for somebody sat in the back, but you know, they do open and well, it's up to you what you think of that as a window. Uh, I've got a couple of lights up here. That's enough about the inside of this car. Let's go and do what this car's all about. It's all about driving it. So let's go and see what it's like on the open road. For my very first ever drive in a Model 3, I've put everything in standard at the moment just to get a feel for the car and see what it's like. And something I've noticed straight away is just how eager it feels. It, if this was sports mode, I would accept that. This feels like a sporty kind of mode to me, but um, just any little movement on the accelerator and it just, it wants to go. It's also very, very comfortable in here. It's very quiet talking as I often do in a car while I'm filming like this there's a I don't know there's almost like the acoustics are different in here they just feel closer you feel like everything's contained in this cabin and there's yes I can hear the the noise from the, the tires outside but that's it really it's uh, it's very very quiet which is lovely my view in particular in this car is extremely good because I've got nothing in front of me I've just got a little bit of this screen sticking up Everything in front is like a huge picture screen. I can just look out on the world. Left and right is good. Of course, these pillars here, they're, yeah, they're, they're quite thick, but you know, if you want a safe car, you have to conform to safety. You have to have pillars like that. Rear view mirror isn't brilliant. You can see out the back, but because you've got that huge sloping glass window that goes from the roof down, the top part of it is smoked and I can see the top part and I can't really see much out of it. If I was to look over, over my shoulder, yeah, I'm not getting a great view out the back. The wing mirrors are average. But of course, if I wanna really see what's behind, I can just change the camera on the screen and I can look at my screen and see what's behind me. So it's not the end of the world. The other nice thing about this car is because it's obviously been designed with aerodynamics in mind, the way that the bonnet slopes away, I can't really see it. I can see the two corner bits, if you like, that stick up above the lights, but I can't see the rest of the bonnet. And as a result, it makes this car feel much smaller than it actually is. If you were to tell me this car was smaller than a Ford Focus, for example, in here, I'd believe you because it feels really, really compact in here. But it's not, of course, it's bigger. It, and the whole thing is bigger and I've got more room in here. But the design makes it feel really nimble and really maneuverable, regardless of whether it is or not. That's how you feel in here. And you don't feel overwhelmed by the size and big bonnets. Yeah, I, I just feel like this is my space, my little area, and I'm in complete control of every, everything around me. And while I'm just stuck in this slow moving traffic, I'll tell you a little bit more about this car. So this will do apparently, according to Tesla, 254 miles to a charge. Now, normally I'd say to you, you can probably reckon on about 200 on the back of that, but 
actually people are getting that sort of mileage out of this car. So this is clearly a car that will regularly go over 200 miles to a charge and the speeds that this car can charge at. If you can find a V3 supercharger, you can put over 70 miles in this car in five minutes. I mean, that's incredible. That, that gives you, I think, the complete package. That's what people want. They want a decent amount of range and fast recharge times. And in the right circumstances, this car can do that. It's got a top speed of 140 miles an hour, and you can do 0 to 60 in 5.4 seconds. So this car is no slouch, even though this is the base model. And yes, it is just over 40,000 pound before the government grant here in the UK, but you tell me any other car that's around about 40,000 pound that can give you that those kind of figures. Uh, I'd be very surprised if there's many, if any at all, that you could get brand new. One of the other things that you really notice between driving electric cars is the way it regenerates energy back into its battery. Now, when you lift off the accelerator, you can feel the car start to slow down and that's energy getting pulled back into the battery to effectively make it go further. This one, you've got two options. You've got standard or you've got low. I'm driving in standard at the moment and it's really quite firm as soon as you lift off the accelerator. And that, for me, as long as it's consistent, that's nice. And that's what I want when I have regen. One of the things you do notice in some cars is that as you lift off the accelerator and then you start to apply the brakes, it's not so consistent. And you find the brakes can be a bit notchy and a bit lumpy. There's none of that in here. It's almost as if they're two separate systems and they, they're not working together, which I think is a good thing because I want, certainly when I start applying my brakes, I want to know exactly what's going on. And I find sometimes when I'm driving my Leaf, they, well, they're not predictable. You'll start to press the brakes and there'll be almost nothing there. Then all of a sudden they'll come on full force, which I really don't like. You don't get that in here at all. It, the brake feels very consistent. The regen feels very consistent and they feel separate. So I'm happy that they're working to the best of their abilities, giving me as much power as I can possibly get back in the battery whilst leaving that safety feature of the brake on its own to do what it needs to do. And suspension wise, while I'm driving around a, a little village here over speed bumps, it feels absolutely fine. It doesn't feel too firm. It doesn't feel too soft. It just feels comfortable. And we'll start, we'll get out onto the A roads and dual carriageways in a minute and see how it handles once we start uh, going a little bit quicker. But certainly around the town, which is kind of where I spend quite a lot of my time driving, it's very, very comfortable. I've now had a chance to drive this on the open roads, the, the A roads around this area. And the thing that's really impressing me most is just how precise, how direct this steering is. It really does, wherever you nudge it, takes the car. It, it, you just have to point it in the right direction. I also, I'm really impressed with the acceleration. I've kept it in standard mode. I, I've, I've got no need to go any quicker than I'm going at the moment. I could happily nip out for an overtake in this standard mode and have all the power I could possibly need. If you need more power than this, you've got something horribly wrong. It's, it's so eager to go all the time. And that's the joy of this car. I think this is probably the first Tesla I've ever driven that I would, I would go so far as to say that this is a driver's car. It's rear wheel drive, it's got loads of power, really direct steering. If you wanted to really have some fun in this and really push on, this car would respond really, really well. But the lovely thing about it is it's set up in such a way that if you didn't, it's still really, really comfortable. So no matter what you're doing, this suspension, it just feels right. It doesn't feel so really harsh as if it's set up to drive on a track and it's bashing you over every bump, but it also doesn't feel all soft and wallowy. It gives you confidence, but it also gives you comfort, which I think is a really, really difficult mix to get and I think they've pretty much got that in here. So that's it, and coming to the end of the day now with this vehicle, and I guess it's only right that I give you my opinion on it. And, well, I can break it down into various categories. First and foremost, the styling, the design of it, I think outside is very understated. And if I'm honest, for me, a little bit too understated, but that's a very personal preference, and I know people will agree and disagree with that. Inside, I think they've got this car absolutely spot on. I was really worried that because it was so minimal, it was gonna look a bit cheap and a bit tacky. But actually the materials used in here and the build quality is very, very good. And it feels very much like a premium car. I think my main concern with it would be the shiny black plastic that I mentioned. Uh, I know a lot of people cover that. 
probably that's what I'd end up doing just to just to protect it really because it's going to look very old very quickly. The one thing I didn't talk about before was the storage space in here and of course you've got the boot at the back which is vast and when you take the the section up that allows you access to the bottom part so so much room in there the back seats will also fold down they split it, it's just cavernous and then add to that the well I suppose it depends where you are in the world whether you call it a frunk or a flute um, there is a small storage area in the front under the bonnet it's not massive but you can fit a few bits and pieces in there so storage is very very good this is an all-round very very good I would suggest family car Plenty of room for everybody in here, plenty of room to cart stuff around. Now, of course, there are two other models that are available to you. You've got the long range and you've got the performance. I don't know that other than a very, very small percentage of people that you would actually need either of those. Yes, of course, it would be nice to have a car that went even faster. Of course, it'd be nice to have a car that went even further. But actually, for the vast majority of us, why spend the extra money? This car does everything you need to do and far, far beyond when you're talking about driving them, certainly here on the roads of the UK. So my end opinion, if I had the money to buy one of these, nothing else would be an option. This is what I would buy, 100%. I, all those little concerns that I had before I stepped into this car have disappeared and it has really, really impressed me today. So the nice thing actually about this car is uh, this has just arrived on the Just EVs rental fleet. So I've got access to this car. So if you've got any questions or you want me to give you any more information about anything, just let me know. I'll compile them, I'll have a look, and we can make as many videos as we want to answer all those questions that you've got about it. So please let me know if there's anything that I've missed that you really, really want to know. But that's it for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, remember to like and share. If you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support the channel, have a look at the Patreon link above. But until next time, you take care. I'll see you soon. All the best.